Let's start by tackling item number one, building a defense system for our satellite. One of the first ideas that might come to mind is that we can shoot at or blow up a hostile satellite. However, protecting our satellite by blowing up the enemy satellite is a really bad option in space. Explosions create lots of debris, and in space, this debris can collide at high speeds with our satellite. We know this because there's already a lot of space junk and such impacts have already occurred. There are already hundreds of thousands of pieces of space junk, and these pieces can run into satellites at over 22,000 miles per hour, which is faster than a speeding bullet. Space agencies already have a monumental task of tracking all this space junk, and we don't want to add to the problem. So we need to come up with another option that will work in space for solving item number one on our list. We've spent quite a lot of time so far in this class talking about electric fields and Ampere's law and so forth, but we haven't spent much time yet on magnetic fields. To start off this section of the class, let's spend some time talking about magnetic fields. Then we can see if we might be able to use magnetic fields to our advantage for this design challenge. In 1892, Hendrik Anton Lorentz, shown here, derived the modern formulation for what we call a Lorentz force. He calculated that a single charge, I'll say dq, moving at a speed of u in a background magnetic field, which I'll say is going over here to the right. So this B field is generated by something else. So this Q, Q, dq charge is moving in the u direction and he calculated that this moving charge would feel an upward force, which I'll call df, and he calculated that to be dq u crossed with b, the applied b field. In other words, back in Wave Propagation Notes 2, we learned that electrons and other charges feel a Coulomb force whenever they are in the vicinity of any electric fields. Like if there's an electric field here generated by charge Q, then Q prime is going to feel a Coulomb force. And that is the electric field generated by charge Q times Q prime. Now we're learning that if electric charges are moving, in the vicinity of any magnetic fields, those moving charges will feel a Lorentzian force, this df force. So in this case, the moving charge dq could feel both a Coulomb force and a Lorentzian force if there are both electric and magnetic fields present. Let's take a moment and see the effect of a Lorentz force in real life. This real life example relates to our design challenge. Solar wind is constantly emitted by the sun towards the Earth. I have a short video of it here from NASA. So here you can see the continuous stream of charged particles from the sun, and when it reaches the Earth, the Earth's magnetic field shields, shields us from a lot of the solar wind. But a funny thing happens right around, you'll see it here in just a second. Here, it's called reconnection that allows some of the charged particles to like slingshot back and follow the Earth's magnetic field towards the polar regions of the Earth. These charged particles then create the aurora, which you can see here. What I want to focus on are the charged particles as they flow down the magnetic field lines towards the poles. So I'll fast forward this part right here it, the video makes it seem like they're flowing straight downwards. But let's consider just one electron in the solar wind plasma as it's following the Earth's magnetic field. Say the electron is initially moving in this direction, so I'll say this is U, and then let's say it moves in the vicinity, vicinity of the Earth's magnetic field, which is oriented into the screen, so I'm going to put that right here. This is B towards the North, the North Pole. Now we have a negatively charged particle moving in a background magnetic field, so it will feel a Lorentz force. And in what direction? Well, we know 
df is equal to minus e u cross b. So using the right hand rule, it, we know it will feel a force. The df force will be in the downward direction. So I'm going to put that in a slightly different color here. This will be df. Then as the electron starts to feel that force, it starts to move downward. And then say this is u. So then the, elect the, the Lorentz force it feels will be in this direction. And so forth, it keeps going. This is now u and df will be up. So then it starts to move upward and you can probably start to see that we're going to make a full circle here. And in fact, that's the case. So as the electrons are moving down the magnetic field, they'll actually start to spiral around the magnetic field. Here's a nice diagram of that. I guess here they have a, a positive charged particle. So let's say that this red dot here is an electron instead then we're going to see it spin around the magnetic field line in the manner that we showed on the previous slide. Take out your class project uh, notebook and write down that a charged particle like an electron from the solar wind will spiral around the Earth's magnetic field to the Lorentz forces that it will feel.